Eventually you become what you like. It takes time to craft art like that. Don't beat yourself up over stats online, you know? Throw your DNA out there. You're the only one that's gonna make the type of art you're gonna make on this planet. Well, we used to go uh, camping quite a bit, and I like to take them trout fishing at the stream down there. And I told them, I says, don't stand too close to the bank because you're gonna fall in. And next thing I know, he's floating down the river. This week, I'm on Eric Anger's couch. He is the director of Quiet D. I brought my uh, little foods in my bag, and um, I've just been crashing here. It's been scary. It's like the best of times, the worst of times. So um, I'm actually in the Boston Comedy Festival, which is this competition, like 96 comedians that I've been wanting to enter for years. A contest that features 96 comics from around the country competing for $10,000 in cash and the chance to call themselves the best of Boston's comedy festival. God, and you know, it's like, <laughs> I haven't smiled a lot lately, but like if I had the 10 grand, I would probably try to get a living environment for five, six months that I could sort of just exist in and not have to worry about constantly bouncing from couch to couch. It's been incredible though, the last couple of weeks, um, you know, getting into the city again, I've been reaching out to a lot of close friends. Um, Alvin Long, who's pretty much been my mentor, who runs New Alliance Studios in Cambridge. He'll come in and he'll say, how are you doing? And he'll say, I feel like Hendrix in May 1970. You know, you're supposed to know what that means. And I do actually. Alvin is timeless, you know? I mean, if there was an ability for me to age gracefully and um, sort of find my niche growing older, you know, it's, uh, somebody like Alvin is someone I look up to in those regards. Rob used to record it at New Alliance back in the day, and I would saw his act, you know, Robbie Road Steamer around town and stuff like that. Rob did a Dylan. He went electric at Newport and uh, alienated all his old road steamer fans by working in an Elliott Smith vein for the last few years. It's all good. But this song. What? Fuck you, asshole! Take your shirt off! Anyways, this song is called Oh She Ra. Don't grab your crown. You know, as I've been trying to assimilate myself back into Boston, it's been very huge to reconnect with some people who have been very near and dear to me. One of them has been Ernie Bach Jr. For just one forty-nine per month. My name is Ernie Bach Jr. Come on down. Come on down. Ernie Bach Jr. is the CEO of Bach Enterprises, which is a huge car dealership. He seems to be an artist uh, that loves music. You know, I was thinking about how I met Rob Bertillo. I met him at the Boston Music Awards. When he walked up to me, I thought I knew him. I, he acted like we were friends. And then he started telling me this plan he had. It was like he was gonna rob a bank, but he was telling the guy walking down the street. And then he said, okay, I'm going. And he, jumped up on stage, stole the Boston Music Award from whoever was getting it. I want to give this to them myself. <laughs> the winner of this award is Robbie Road Steamer. That's right. It ran out the building. That's how I met him. I'm burning up circles. Dip, dip. For sure, Rob's totally addicted to his art. When he finishes something, uh, there's a temporary euphoria. 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, and then he'll slip back into depression again. 
It's been really up and down, unpredictable and pretty fast. I mean, I've been trying to insert myself big time back into performing. I've been doing a lot of comedy shows, getting ready for the Boston Comedy Festival. Do you like Star Wars? Do you like Star Wars Return of the Jedi? Do you like that scene at the end? <laughs> now, now you die! The guy's a workaholic. He never stops. It's unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Rob Patillo. And somebody back there from Cambridge, somebody that needs 40 seconds to cross the crosswalk. What's up with that shit? 40 seconds? Fucking Christopher Reeve shit. It's 40 seconds? It's fucking 10 feet. Austin gets 20. Somerville gets 15. But Princess Fancy Boots. Boston Comedy Festival and I feel like this is a tremendous opportunity. I would love to make it to the semis and the finals and sort of see what I can do. We can't cross right now so I can give you a quick introduction. Um, that's the Davis Square Theater over there. I'm going to be doing some comedy. We can cross that. No, no, not yet. Boston Comedy Festival, I mean it's basically something that I've been wanting to do since the summer. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw everything against the wall, man. I've been working on it so hard. Um, I love my songs. I love the presentation I give. I love the ability to improvise on stage, and I hold the art of comedy in the highest regard. What's wrong with you guys? I just want to enjoy it. You got creepy dickhead eyes. You are judging me, but I see that. You don't see that. I'm just trying to do five tight minutes up here so I can get on Leno, and I have angry, judging lady eyes. I don't like this. I'm gonna do another song for you. <laughs> this song's about girls and their dreams. Like, I can see it in their eyes. They're like, what the fuck am I watching? A big round of applause for all 12 comedians that you saw tonight. Your first meeting is Sean Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen. Sean Sullivan. The third comedian is Mitch Gustis. And the third comedian is Mike Baldwin. That's it for that round one. I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. I mean, I'm I'm 37 years old, and uh, you know, I mean, I, I really invested a lot in believing I, I could be a comedian in Boston, but. It's hard when um, you, you can't get your dreams off the ground. And I mean, I, I, it's hard to convince the four-year-old spirit inside me that things are still possible when I, when I can't even make a living as an artist in Boston. When the girl that I told I loved screamed at me that it was a mistake and we can't even talk about it. When I look in the mirror in the morning and I see this shriveled up bald-headed fraud, I mean, I, I love this world, but this world doesn't seem to sometimes live up to, like, the hopes and dreams that I imagined when I was a kid. The thing about Rob is there's something there. I don't know what the hell it is, but there's something there.